The Against Malaria Foundation conducts distributions of long-lasting insecticide-treated bed nets, or LINs for short. Such distributions are currently the most cost-effective vector control intervention aimed at eliminating malaria. For many years after its founding in 2004, AMF had been conducting many small distributions of a couple of thousand nets to fill little holes in the net coverage left by larger distributors. When we zoom out geographically and temporally, we can see these historical distributions all over the world. They are hidden by default because nets distributed more than three or four years ago are likely to be mostly defunct today. We can always find such information by hovering over the little info symbols. In recent years, however, more funding has become available to AMF and it has focused on fewer, larger distributions. Some of these are still in the future. In all cases, these distributions were conducted in regions that are still malarial today, mostly in regions where Plasmodium falciparum is the leading cause of malaria, but also in some of the regions where Plasmodium vivax is found. The demands on their distribution partners, the charities that actually run the distribution on the ground, have restricted the set of partners they can work with and thus the countries they can conduct distributions in. But Malawi, Ghana and the Democratic Republic of the Congo have seen more recent large distributions. These are all countries with large funding gaps. Let's focus on the DRC. To date, AMF hasn't completed a distribution of more than 1 million nits, though such distributions are forthcoming. The DRC has a net gap of over 2 million for 2016, so more than AMF can likely fill. The distributions that I have survey data on were conducted in 2014, when the net gap was over 8 million. This is an important criterion that AMF uses to prioritize distributions. Since the actual household level survey data has been imported to the LIN visualizer, we can view the convex hulls of these distributions. Several of them overlap. As we will see, this is partially the result of minor input errors when the survey was conducted, but it can also be completely correct because some of these distributions are targeted geographically, where others cover, for example, all hospitals. More generally, these distributions are clustered so closely together because they belong to the same overarching campaign, what AMF calls distribution proposals. Let's have a closer look at one of these distributions. What we see now is the expanse of the villages covered in the distribution. This layer is flexible so that if another country doesn't have villages or they are so many or so few that the user wouldn't gain any insight from drilling down to this level, some other administrative division can be used such as health areas, streets or blocks. The current view is also filtered and this brings us to the errors in the data that I've been able to detect thanks to the LIN visualizer. I will widen the filters to demonstrate. All village names are disambiguated using larger administrative divisions, but there may be still some villages with the same name in the same district and health area, but these are going to be fairly close together and thus hard to distinguish from parts of the same village if it is one that, for example, migrates periodically as farming requires. But there are also obvious errors that cannot be explained this way. The greenish or reddish colors indicate the geographic variance of the households, the mean distance of the households in the village from their centroid. The extremely large convex hulls here extend beyond the health area whose expanse can be guessed from the more green hulls. When I noticed these irregularities, I asked Dr. Andrew Garner of AMF about them. He investigated the phenomenon and found that what happened there was probably the result of a usability problem of the survey form. Teams usually conduct the survey in one health area at a time, and so they don't have to enter the same name of the health area for each household, they can set it permanently. But when another team uses the same smartphones for another health area, some of the volunteers must have forgotten to reset the name. Neither I nor AMF have been able to find shapefiles of these health areas, which would have helped, but luckily the errors affect less than 1% of the villages. 
This usability problem was an important learning that will improve future surveys. What we can also see here are insecticide resistance tests that have been conducted in the DRC. They are already filtered so that only the more recent tests are displayed and only tests for the chemical class that is used in LINs. For all distributions and villages, we can also view statistics on malaria knowledge. Most people in this distribution region, for example, are well informed on malaria transmission or at least know what the distribution team wants to hear. Only a small fraction believes in witchcraft as a means of transmission. Common measures of malaria treatment. Net usage. And net sources in the regions. These statistics will look even more interesting when the first batches of post-distribution checkup data become available and the changes within 6 months, 12 months and so on become visible in the graphs. The usage graph also nicely shows the regional net gap. If you are logged in, you can also drill down to the level of the households. The color indicates the number of nets and the size the number of people in the household. One feature that I added after the first version of this video was produced is a layer that I called the indicator layer. I had received the feedback that users would like to overlay the distribution data with the generic frequently used indicators. In particular, the mean GDP per capita was cited as an interesting one, but I have found many other interesting measures from the World Bank, Gallup, the Center for Global Development, the World Happiness Report and others. Many of these metrics are now available in the LIN visualizer for most countries in several past years. Since we're already logged in, I can now show the administration interface. The Django framework provides an app that can be adapted to many different data administration needs. It also provides the authentication system we just used. Here, AMF can set up users and user groups and manipulate the permissions that these users and groups should have. They can, for example, give one user permission to edit the net gaps, insecticide resistance tests, other statistical properties, all without giving them access to the survey data that contains a lot of personal information. Here, AMF can search for individual distributions, clusters, insecticide resistance tests, country-level net gaps, and much more, filter them by common attributes, and even edit geometric properties such as the expands of countries. More commonly though, this will be done programmatically by one of the many data import interfaces of the LIN visualizer, or via one of the computational jobs that derive aggregate geometric properties from the data. Please feel free to visit nets.clavager.net to experiment with the software yourself.